You didn't think I was just going to stop at eight games, did you? No, I've got a bunch more GameCube games that I want to show you, and I'll pull them. Actually, let's not go from the bin. Let's go from one of the weird ones. Your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, by the way. Legend of the Zelda, Legend of the Zelda, <laughs> and the Four Swords Plus. So we've got here the special Link Cable Edition. Let's open this up and see here it was sold with the OG. Like, remember, this was back in like 2002, 2003. The Game Boy Advance was doing very well, but, but the GameCube was not. Well, how do you try and cross promote? Well, why not make games that work both on the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube? For example, let me open it up probably over this side. Yes, for example, Four Swords. There was the other Four Swords game that came out for the Game Boy Advance that was just sort of a port of A Link to the Past. Fantastic game, by the way. But they really, it was sort of like a backdoor pilot where they were trying to get people to cross between the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube, and they were doing it via The Legend of Zelda. So what else do we have here? Yes, we've got all of, and this is like original art, like original Wind Waker style art. Again, remember how crazy people were? There were people going like, why aren't there more realistic Zeldas? Even people in Japan. I was actually just watching a TV show that was put out in Japan in like the late 2002. And even they mentioned like, why aren't people, why, why did you go with the cartoony, the cartoony graphics for Wind Waker? And they're like, well, it's because we're able to, ex they're able to express better. And you can see there, yeah, it looks so much better. It's held up. It stood the test of time. Twilight Princess, eh, it looks okay. The, the HD version for the Wii U looks, looks all right. It looks fine. Does it look as good as Wind Waker? No. Does it play as well as Wind Waker? Hmm. That's tough. I don't know which I would choose if I had to choose between Wind Waker and Twilight Princess because they are both just so good. And there we go. Back in as it's supposed to be, not too much bulging. There we go. So let's put four swords over here. And then we go to another big box game. We go to Dobutsu no Mori E Plus, Animal Crossing. Originally released for the Nintendo 64 in Japan. Yes, yes. Animal Crossing was originally, yeah, remember this was a big Famicom, this is like the Famicom 20th anniversary. You could finally play Famicom games on your GameCube. This is also the e-reader version. Like, think about how insane Nintendo was back in the 2000s. They were just throwing stuff at the wall, trying to get it to work. We got the E, the e Plus version here. We got, that's like what the link cable. This plugs into your Game Boy Advance. It reads the cards. I actually don't have any e-reader cards, so I don't know if it works properly. Oh yeah, remember like the Game Boy Advance SP had come out and with the backlight, it had completely made the original Game Boy Advance completely obsolete but it was almost impossible to plug into the Game Boy Advance. People were going nuts. Also, yeah, don't eat the D Plus reader, please. There's the manual. What were, what were they thinking? Putting, putting dot matrix onto, onto cards and you'd have to swipe like 20 cards to actually get anything to work. Animal Crossing is still, I think the original for the GameCube still holds up. It's still a good game. Oh man, oh no, I'm getting my fingerprints on the game. I don't know. I don't know, I'm getting my hand oil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rot the disc in like 30 years. I'll have to clean that off later. But let's see, ooh, what spicy inserts do we get with? Oh, yes, because this is originally supposed to come with another memory card. I should have like five memory cards by now, but of course I do not. Here we've got, unfortunately not Animal Crossing branded. Big, big miss on, <laughs> on Nintendo's part. But if you haven't played the GameCube Animal Crossing, perhaps, the Switch version has superseded it in every way because there's a lot more options, better graphics. But I love going back into this game sometimes just because it really takes me back to like the early 2000s. And sort of like, you know, this is the era of The Sims. This is when games didn't have to be, you know, violent schlock fests. They could just be about living life. They could be about doing cool things. It could be about living in a town full of animals and you're the only humans. No one under, like... Like, did, did the other animals, like, evolve to have opposable thumbs? What happened? I'm not sure. You're going to have to tell me. Has anybody figured out the lore behind Animal Crossing? Or am I just sounding weird 
so that I can sound at least a little bit entertaining while I'm trying to put this away. Uh, there we go. And we put it away. So let's move Animal Crossing to the side and get out the other big boy. Here we've got Odama, a bizarre, bizarre game where you go back to like the 15 or 1600s in Japan, I think, or no, is this, is this the Sengoku Jidai? So that would be, yeah, that'd be 1500s. Comes with a microphone because you talk in the microphone and you tell what your soldiers on the battlefield to, should do. And guess what? The army is actually, or the battlefield is a pinball board. This is so weird. This is, you think Cuba War is weird? Old Dama is even weirder love that very understated look at that i love the original nintendo font by the way nintendo kabushiki gaisha i think this is developed by nintendo right or at least it was like it was like um published by nintendo i think but yes odama here we've got the little disc cleaning manual and club nintendo odama odama.jp this is so weird this is the most japanese game for the gamecube Look at that. They even have all the text flowing from top to bottom. Samurai armor suit. Old Dama. Yeah, you like, what is the deal? You've got to get your, you have to get your soldiers. Oh, wow. That's cool. And this actually came out in English. I think this for some bizarro reason. So here we go. We've got the battle flows from here. It's like, I think, oh, it's like all the levels. Because you five, this, uh, if you look at the right, five, six, seven wait nine what, what oh no wait eight's here eight's here yeah you go to that castle go to those castles that's fascinating i love that that's beautiful this is this is yeah this is the best artwork i've ever seen in a manual oh, i think i think i'm gonna declare that now weird game weird game but very it is fun it is fun to play i i, I can at least tell you that this is one of the few games <laughs> on the GameCube that I've actually played. I've actually not been able to clear it because it is pretty difficult. Not because it can't recognize what you're saying, but there's a lot of strategy involved into sending your troops in the right direction. You've got to manipulate the giant cannonball that you hit with the flippers at the bottom of the game. You move those around. Actually, yeah, why don't I put this on the screen? It's a little bit more entertaining. You can see in here, there's the mic stand. That's how you attach the microphone to your controller. It's so weird. And this plugs into the uh, one of the memory card slots. This actually, I think the mic, I think there's a Mario Party that uses the microphone and there's a karaoke game for the GameCube, I'm pretty sure. But strange, absolutely weird, bizarro game, Odama. Let's see, what else have we got? Oh, we've got Eternal Darkness. Yes, not a Japanese exclusive, of course, one of the bigger games for the GameCube. This was one of those moments where Nintendo was trying to say that the GameCube is not just for the children. Because Nintendo up to this point, I, mean, I think especially with the Nintendo 64, despite Conker's Bad... Conker... No, Conker's Bad Fur Day? Yes, that's how you're supposed to say it. Despite Conker's Bad Fur Day attempting to make the system a little bit more adult, a little bit more mature, given the advent of things like South Park, the N64 was considered a child's console. Oh, did I not close that right? Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh. what have I done? Look at that. There we go. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's so weird. Okay, we'll put this back in. But yes, so the Nintendo 64 was generally considered a child's console. The GameCube would also, I think, be considered a child's console as well. Uh, not Certainly not in the least because of games like Star Fox, Star Fox, Star Fox, Star Fox Adventures. <laughs> Which is a good game. I actually really loved this game when I was a kid. And why do they why do they have the comic in English on the back? That's weird. I don't understand that. But yeah, look at that. Oh, is this the one? Oh yeah, I remember. I think this is the one where I was afraid that like a lot of that is not scratches. Some of it scratches certainly, like you can see there on the top left of the disc. I'm I'm kind of worried that this is suffering from disc rot. And you can actually see, look at look at the the discoloration there. I'm, I'm kind of worried about my copy of Star Fox Adventures. I have heard that GameCube games are very prone to disc rot. I don't know how true that is. I've tested most of my games and they seem to work fine. And if, if Star Fox Adventures bites the dust, it's not the worst thing. <laughs> like I'd hate it if Old Dama bit the dust and I'd hate it if like Ikaruga uh, didn't work anymore. But Star Fox Adventures, it's a pretty cheap game. So I don't worry that much about it. 
Okay, you know what? I'm going to put this down. I have to take a little break because we've I've shown you how many. So what do we do? Biohazard, Eternal Darkness, Odama, Four Swords, as well as Animal Crossing. And I've still got like, I didn't think I could do three videos out of this, but I've got so many games that I can indeed. And if you want a little preview, this is what I'll be showing you in the next video. Oh, what, what, what could this what could this game be? So I'm gonna hold it here. If you would like to support the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash jcontra. That's where you'll be able to access exclusive videos that I make every month for all of my patrons, as well as polls that will determine what I focus on in a particular month for the channel. This month is the month of GameCube and was voted in the last poll by the patrons, which is why I'm showing you all my GameCube games now and why I'm playing games over at twitch.tv slash jcontra, GameCube games specifically. So I've been your man out of Japan, jcontra. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and mahalo.